Welcome back to the International Desk. I'm Linda Kincaid. The gestures of goodwill between North and South Korea are still continuing after Friday's inter-Korean summit. South Korea is removing the loudspeakers that once blared K-pop and propaganda across the border. And Pyongyang says it will bring its time zone in line with Seoul. Right now, it is half an hour behind. All this coming as US President Donald Trump weighs in on possible locations for his own summit with the North Korean leader. He tweeted, numerous countries are being considered for the meeting. But would Peace House Freedom House on the border of North and South Korea be a more representative, important and lasting site than a third party country? Just asking. <laughs> well, Paul Hancock joins me now from Seoul, South Korea. Certainly head spinning how quickly this relationship has changed. We just months ago, we saw these insults being thrown back and forth between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong Un. And now uh, we're hearing about where they're going to have this meeting and it sounds like President Trump is um, pushing for somewhere very close to North Korea. That's right. I think uh, probably he saw what happened on Friday, that summit between the North and South Korean leaders, which quite frankly was picture perfect. It was a made for TV moment. The optics uh, were very strong. Uh, forget the substance, but the optics were certainly strong. And potentially the US president has seen that and, and realized that uh, that it is uh, it's it's a rate winner. It's something that he would potentially like to do. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a change. We were hearing from US officials that they thought Singapore or Mongolia would be uh, the, the, uh, the two options. They were favoring uh, Singapore from a security point of view, but clearly a security point of view the DMZ, you can't really get much more secure than that. We're also hearing some more details about what was said and what was agreed at that summit on Friday from the uh, the Blue House, saying that Kim Jong-un has agreed to shut down his nuclear test site uh, at uh, Pungari in the northeast of the country in May. Uh, so that could be very soon, considering May starts tomorrow. He's going to invite experts and journalists to, uh, to be transparent about the whole thing. Also saying that there are actually two more tunnels that no one knew about at that site that are in very good condition uh, but if there is no aggression from the US if they manage to end the Korean War he doesn't feel a need to have his nuclear weapons and of course this site uh, that he says he will shut down this is the site of that collapse that tunnel collapse um, late last year after the, the major bomb test a collapse which many analysts and geologists said made that site unusable uh, do we know the status of that site right now Well, we have been hearing from Chinese geologists that they believe there was a partial collapse and so the, the, the site was obsolete. So Kim Jong-un saying that he was going to shut the site down was, uh, was not that significant. Kim Jong-un himself, according to the Blue House, actually addressed that and said that report is not true, saying that there are two more tunnels uh, that are in very good condition. Uh, so he completely negated that. We also have uh, more quotes from, uh, from Kim Jong-un saying he's not the kind of person that would uh, launch a nuclear missile against the South Koreans or the United States. That, according to the Blue House. Linda? Certainly a change in rhetoric. All right. Paula Hancock, good to have you with us. Thanks so much.